button. Hello, once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shashow. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. Mr. Alan Parsons worked as assistant engineer on the last two albums by the Beatles. And after he qualified as a fully fledged recording engineer, he went on to work with Paul McCartney and the Hollies, among many others. But it was his contributions as engineer on Pink Floyd's classic, The Dark Side of the Moon, that really got him world attention. That soon led him to striking successes as a producer, notably with Pilots Magic, John Miles High Fly in Music, and Steve Harley's uh, Make Me Smile. He also produced the hugely successful Year, Year of the Cat album with Al Stewart and two albums with American prog rock band Ambrosia. 1975, he met Eric Wilson, who not only became his manager, but joined forces with Alan as a songwriting and performing partner for what became known as the Alan Parsons Project, and a string of hit albums followed. Parsons' most recent studio release is entitled From the New World and features the classic sounds Parsons has become known for for his impressive career with progressive, symphonic, and classic rock elements all touched upon on this stunning album. Guest appearances from the likes of renowned guitarist and singer Joe Bonamassa, Tommy Shaw Sticks, vocalist David Pack of Ambrosia, and vocalist James Durbin. Add wonderful atmosphere to the stunning performances by Alan and his incredible backing band. Please welcome legendary audio engineer, singer, songwriter, musician, and record producer, Alan Parsons to interviewing the legends. Hello, Alan. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good First to, of all, good to hear, I mean, oh, you told my oh, entire, you told, already told my entire life story, so I, I don't know what I can help you with. <laughs> hey, that's just a very, very tiny bit, man. You've had a great career. <laughs> First, I want to say congratulations on your OBE. That's quite an honor. That uh, that was a, a great honor, um, and I actually got to got to meet uh, Prince William uh, at Windsor Castle to have him uh, present it to me. So uh, yeah, it was a, a, a great honor and, and totally unexpected, I must say. Also, how are you feeling, man? I know you you had some surgery done, right? Some spinal surgery. How, how's that going? You look great. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's a, it's a slow process. I'm 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 doing uh, physical therapy, and uh, I have a trainer comes three times a week. So, trying to get myself back in shape. Uh, but uh, I'll be I'll be fine. Uh, it's just but it's it, it is slow. It's a slow recovery. Yeah, I've been through rehab a lot. I I broke my shoulder, my wrist, all all kinds of bones. So I know how it is, man. And rehab is brutal. It hurts, but it's necessary. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the new album from the new world. Um, I love it, by the way, it's, it's a great album. Um, I gave it five stars. Um, it's, it's your sixth studio album since, uh, the end of Alan Parsons project. Um, many of the lyrics are kind of melancholy. It puts you and there's a few, uh, tracks that are kind of a, a bit sad as well. Uh, what were you going with some of those tracks that that were kind of, kind of like that? You're, you're probably, you're probably referring to the lyrics on "Going Home." Right. Um, it was um, it was actually a song written by uh, one of Antonin Dvorak's students um, when he was living in America. Okay. Um, he th that's where the title of the album came from because Dvorak's most famous symphony is mm -hmm. uh, is called "From." So I, I borrowed his uh, his title, and um, yes, it was one of his students that wrote wrote the song. A, a few people have uh, have done covers of it. Um, it was uh, I don't know if you've got any uh, viewers in the UK, but um, lots of them. Yeah. Uh, every, uh, okay. Well, anybody in the UK would know it as the Hovis commercial. Okay. Uh, which, uh, which used that same uh, melody. It's the slow movement from the from the symphony. But uh, I've I've always wanted to uh, to do at least uh, at least an extract from the from the symphony uh, mm -hmm. a, a sort of more modern rock version of it i mean it's not as if it's it's really rock and roll it's it's, it's got hardly any uh, percussion on it and certainly no drums but uh, 
it's uh i think that's where you're getting the melancholy vibe maybe oh definitely it i mean the album's eclectic you know it's got um it's got some great songs on there which i love them you know a lot of favorites uh fair the well very cool intro um great sax on that love that song um the secret kind of reminds me of a very 60s british sound and a little bit psychedelic is that right <laughs> yeah um the the writer um mark michael is uh i think he's uh probably more more influenced by the Beatles than most people um <laughs> he uh he, he he did a lovely job and uh, I love the I love the lyrics as well he's he's a very clever very clever lyricist um but uh yeah I, I I'm uh you know I'm 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 proud of this album I really mm -hmm. am and it's uh it's it's getting some good attention which is nice I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right is it Ouroboros how, how do you pronounce that Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Okay. And that's the track that features Tommy Shaw sticks. Um, this song is a hit. I mean, <laughs> that's a hit song. That's, it's a great classic rock track. I mean, I could hear it being played by the Alan Parsons project sticks or even bad company playing this tune. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a great song. Well put together. Yeah, it, it was it was great um, to get uh, Tommy involved with it. Um, I, I found out sort of through uh, through the grapevine that he was actually a big fan of the Alan Parsons project, uh, and uh, he he absolutely jumped at the chance when when we called him. Uh, he he was um, acquainted with uh, one of the guitarists in the band, Dan Tracy, and uh, no, it, it was great. We we actually did that vocal uh, at a distance. Um, he was. Uh, he was in Nashville at the time, and I was uh, I was here in Santa Barbara in my studio. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's uh, that's the way that's the way records get made these days. But, I know in, in, in the COVID world. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, you know, and it it works fine. You know, it, it's almost as if he's there. We're you know we've got TV pictures of each other, and uh, yeah. you know he's. he's you know, I'm uh, directing uh, directing him uh, as as I would anybody else who was actually here face to face. But it, it works great. It works great to do it uh, on online like this. It saves on hotel bills and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, partying <laughs> like in the old days. <laughs> um, Don't fade now is a beautiful song. Who who, who sings on that? Um, that's uh, a combination of me and um, and PJ Olson, who is okay. uh, a long time uh, singer of the band, um, and uh, I think it works well. We're going we're we're actually doing two gigs next week, uh, one in Salt Lake City and one in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to be playing it live for the first time. Oh, wonderful! So it'll be uh, interesting to see how that works out. Uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in Florida and you usually come to Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater. So I, I yeah, cover Ruth Eckerd in Tampa and, and all the Tampa Bay area. So uh, I get to see a Ruth Eckerd, which is good. We're, we're sharing our monitor engineer with uh, the guy from uh, Ruth Eckerd. Oh, really? It's, it's is a that great, right? great venue. Great venue. It's, it's a great venue. venue. Yeah. Yeah. Styx loves that venue. They, I mean, they come every three months. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming back again very soon. Um, right. Give him my love. Now that features James Durbin. For a lot of people that don't know James, he was an American Idol al alumni, and he he played with Quiet Riot for a couple of years, I believe, too. He was the lead singer of Quiet Riot, and um, Joe Bonamassa is also on that track, which is very cool. I like I love Joe. He's a great guitar player. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's coming to Santa Barbara quite soon, so I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing him. Um, again, I recorded Joe at a distance. He was, uh, he was, uh, in his studio in, in, in Nashville and I was here and, uh, same thing. But, uh, the interesting thing about this song is that, um, uh, James, it was written by James and, uh, Julian Colbeck, who is the, uh, other half of my educational series, which is called the art and science of sound recording. Right. And, um, he, he uh, just did a fantastic job 
uh, singing and you know writing writing the lyrics and singing. Uh, but we we are, we actually had about uh, maybe maybe twenty people here in the control room uh, because it was a it was a master class. Oh, so cool! Yeah. A master class showing showing people how how records are made and uh, yeah, he was able to you know put up with all these all these people and they, and they were all sort of budding producers so they all had ideas and yep. Were, Throwing them out there, so very cool. But it, it's fun. I've done quite a few of these uh, masterclasses now. They, they, they work out well. Those are getting very popular. I know uh, Billy Cobham. Billy does a lot of these master classes. A, a, a lot of musicians do. A lot of legendary musicians are doing these now, which is great. You know, I think yeah, it's I incredible. Mean, it, it's uh, it's just another way, another way of communicating with the, with with our audience. You know, exactly. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, it fulfills a need for people who want to learn how how records are made and yep. uh, lift lift the veil a bit. It's all recording is a bit a bit a bit uh, sort of mystical to most people. What what it what it's all about? And it, it really takes uh, being a fly on the wall to to really mm -hmm. understand what goes on. It, well, it's it's essentially, it's essentially really difficult to capture on on video or on <laughs> film because it's it moves so slowly. Yeah. <laughs> like, Comparison with a with a the, the the speed of a of a video program. So, but it it, it works well. But know. what blows me away is, is is the huge mixing board. You know, I, I was in radio and and I went through broadcasting school uh, with CBS back in the late seventies, and I was a top forty DJ. So I I know a lot of you know electronics, and my my uh, family was in electronics since the late fifties. And I, I think you started out with reel-to-reel um, -reel tape, right? Promoting or doing something with reel-to-reel -reel tape. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're talking about my beginnings, right? Yeah, now, your right? beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the 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 norm was four tracks, believe it or not. Right. Um, and uh, eight track was just appearing at, at the time I got the job at Abbey Road, and uh, yeah, just uh, just learned the uh, learned the art by watching <clears throat> the great the great engineers that uh, that abbey road had uh, you know the, what what made abbey road blossom was was the, the their incredible engineers i think and you know i learned from the best jeff emery ken scott um peter vince peter Baum, all, all these great great engineers you know i i, mean, I asked i asked one todd run todd rungren you know how how he got to do what he does, you know, engineering and everything. He says he just jumped in there one day and started learning. How, how, uh, did you kind of do that as well? Just kind of. Yeah, well, I mean, I think he probably uh, was he not uh, employed by a studio, uh, or did he just? Uh... He might have been, but the, no one really taught him. He said he just kind of learned by, you know. Playing with a, you know, he's a gadget person anyway, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember uh, I was when I first met him. I he he was uh, uh, in on the the latest craze, which was CD ROMs mm -hmm. back in the uh, back in the nineties. Um, and uh, yeah, he 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 taught me a bit about the the, uh, the ins and outs of of creating CD ROMs, and we did uh, we did create one for for an album called On Air. Um, I'm hoping that because uh, nobody has a CD player anymore, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping I might be able to convert it to a to an online program that people can access. Yeah, on my on my bucket list of things <clears throat> to do. See, I was really fortunate. I was talking about my family and the family business. They started in the late '50s, and I grew up uh, since I was six years old in the family business and it was retail electronics. So I got to see the reel to reel transistor radios, um, the next phase, you know, a tracks, cassettes, CDs, the, the Sony Walkman, which came out in 1979, which was like the biggest thing ever, you know? So I, I got to learn that way, which was really cool. Speaking of the Sony Walkman, uh, we, launched our album iRobot the second album in the UK by giving uh, a bunch of journalists and uh, press people uh, TV uh, TV and radio people of course as well mm -hmm. we actually gave them a Walkman a pretty extravagant gift but, that is uh, 
worked really well. And then we we sat them down in this restaurant and told them to press the play button, and they all listened to the album. On, <laughs> Very on cool. The and uh, yeah, it went down went down the storm. Went really 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 well. It, yeah, that just blew everybody away when that came out. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to the album, I want to mention Obstacles. Now, you may be a little surprised about what I'm going to say about this, but it sounds a little bit Beatles, and I could actually hear John Lennon singing this song. Yeah, Mark, Mark's voice is, is a little Lennon-esque, I have to say. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. I think I, it wouldn't be the first time it's been said. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a great time. I, I love it. It's a very poetic song. I love it. Who wrote Who wrote Obstacles? Was that you? Um, I mean, I, I co-write everything. Right. Uh, you know, I, I take a take some credit for for the writing on everything, but uh, it's Mark Michael again. It's the same same guy that did um, the, the the not the, the first not not Obstacles, the other one. Um, <laughs> gone out of my head. But, the uh, the, the, uh, the secret. Yeah, the secret. The secret. That's why right. I remember it because it's also the title of the last album. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so. But that's a great tune, man. Very, very cool. Um, I won't be led astray. Now that's got David Pack and Joe Bonamas on it. Um, mm. Also, kind of a very sad song, you know. Um, yeah, um, you know, there there is a a, a certain amount of. Uh, melancholy in this album i think mm -hmm. uh, but I, I i i first heard that song um from from uh, a, a guy called uh, david manassian who not only is uh, a, a very talented musician and songwriter uh he's also done all our video projects for the last uh, few years right uh, directed a uh, two, two two videos which we've we've released one was in um uh, tel aviv israel and the other was in uh, Utrecht and Holland, and they're already out there. Um, it, it, it's it's kind of a good substitute for for people to hear us playing live because we haven't been doing gigs. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he's he's a very very talented guy, and uh, I think that that song is great. And we got um, David Pack from Ambrosia to do the, yeah. to do the book, and um, that that was uh, that was a real. Uh, real privilege to work with david again we, we, we we've remained best of friends ever yeah. since the late 70s um and he's just about to move to uh this this neck of the woods he's bought a house oh, in cool. Santa Barbara. very cool yeah before i logged on with you my camera was acting up and i had to switch uh connections in the back so i was worried about that too i might have to get a new camera i don't know Anyway, um, you ended the album with Be, Be My Baby by the Ronettes. That's, uh, was that a tribute to Ronnie Spector, basically? or More of a tribute to, to Phil Spector. Uh, to uh, Phil but, Spector, uh, okay. We, we, we lost Ronnie just a few weeks ago, actually. Right. Um, passed away. Um, it, it was just one of, one of those great Spector mm -hmm. productions. I, I, I've always wanted to do a, a cover version of it. And um, I got this fantastic singer called tabitha fair who is well known in nashville circles uh to to, to do all the vocals and uh i i love it i i i don't tire of listening to my version or the original version <laughs> just, just love it right. she really nailed it i mean it sounds just like the original <laughs> it's amazing the funny thing is you know um you say it sounds just like the original phil Spector was famous for huge amounts of echo and tape echo mm -hmm. and, and delay echoes and, and right. so on. Uh, but he, he, he did that on his version, but the vocal, uh, Ronnie Spector's vocal was completely dry. No effects at all. No effects. Oh. Which is interesting uh, because I, I tried it that way on my version and it just didn't sound right. So I put <laughs> as much echo on uh, Tabitha sure. as, as, as everything else. But it's, it's just <clears throat> strange how, um, how he, uh, he made such a great record with a completely dry vocal against all that big, big wall of sound in the background. You know, I, I grew up with 60s top 40 music. I mean, there's nothing better than the 60s and the radio in the 60s was incredible, but very simple in the recording studio, right? And the cool thing is all those songs were 
crisp and clear and and they did have that kind of echo chamber effect in back of those songs and even today when you listen to those old songs i got a jukebox with all 45s behind me they still sound fantastic right um you know the every every decade i think had it had it sort of it's it's sound it's uh, it's identity um but interestingly um i i don't feel that i necessarily followed fashion mm -hmm. uh, i i you know it has been said that my albums could have been released in reverse order and they wouldn't have sounded it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been that thing but uh here we go oh huh. i i have to draw attention to that that uh those words behind you it right right at the moment it could be not saying let's rock it could be saying something else completely <laughs> a, 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 a word beginning with f <laughs> nope it's let's rock <laughs> uh, you had your head a moment ago right? oh okay sorry about that, that. Really that yeah. that's funny yeah, there it is right, right there. <laughs> now you're starting to sound like rick wickman <laughs> rick's a funny guy man i had him on the show he's He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I did a couple of sessions with him way back. Um, yeah, I mean, he wouldn't remember me, but uh, he, he, he did, uh, you know, he did sessions for the likes of Mickey Most. Uh, yep. He's a, a big uh, British record producer. Yeah. I want to met you mentioned some of the dates you got coming up. Denver, West Valley City, Maverick Center, uh, Paramount Theater in Denver. Uh, I know you had to cancel your European tour, right? Because of the surgery. What's going on with touring now? Well, um, these these two shows uh, next week are going to be the, uh, the the test. You know, see if I can right. If I can stand up on a stage for two hours. Yeah. Um, I, actually, even before the surgery, I was spending some time sitting down. Um, because it's you know it's it's much more comfortable for me uh, sitting down and standing up, um, but uh, I'll, I'll get through it. But it, it it will be a test, and then we'll uh, see how I, how we get, we get on. Then maybe we'll organize some more shows next year. We're also doing a cruise, the oh, good. Um, cruise in January, yeah. uh, with uh, the likes of um, Justin Haywood, um, Zombies, Al Stewart, uh, Steve Hackett. Uh, we we did a fairly similar one um this this time last year oh no no it was earlier early this year early, early this year. uh so looking forward to it they're, they're, they're fun times it's just like sort of like a holiday but you have a gig in the evening it's just, it's, it's kind of fun and you get to hang out with all your old buddies too <laughs> yeah. which is cool yeah <laughs> One one um, song, one of your hit songs that I love, uh, and I love the lyrics too, is Games People Play. Did, did you write that song? Um, I had a hand in it. Um, right. But, you know, uh, Eric Wolfson was really the, the main songwriter yeah. of all, all the projects. Are. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the, the the loop idea was probably, was I think that would have come from me, you know, the mm -hmm, thing that sure. just goes through the... Uh, through the song start to finish yeah it really hits home you know as you get older and you know i i've got five grandkids now of course my my kids are older uh, do, do you have children do you have grandkids i have two two boys both living uh -huh. in the uk um I, i've lived in america since uh, 2000 right uh, but uh, we we recently had a holiday in barbados so i got to see the eldest the eldest son nice. his wife my granddaughter i have a seven-year-old granddaughter oh uh, so that was nice they're um, great aren't they <laughs> love grandchildren <laughs> they're, not, they're not kids anymore. i mean but, but the, the parents aren't kids anymore i mean my, my my eldest son is well into his 40s so. in his 40s now wow yeah my my daughter is what 37 i think she's 37 yeah time flies man <laughs> it really does Thank you, man, for everything you've done on Dark Side of the Moon. That's got to be one of the greatest albums of all time. And your name comes up over and over again on that album. 50th, 50th anniversary coming up next year. Wow. I'm expecting a huge uh, spate of interviews to be asked for. <laughs> but, uh, 
That's amazing. Yeah, I'm probably it's just going to say, I've said everything I can say about Dark Side of the Moon. Please don't, please don't <laughs> ask me, what would it like to work on Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say congratulations on what you've done to that. I, I've had um, uh, Henry McCullough on the show before he, his passing. And, of course, his little contribution to that album. Uh, you know, I don't know. I was really drunk at the time, which was yeah. on the album. You know, um, do you know the story? Do you know that? Do you know the story behind that? Uh, something uh, about it. He had a fight with his wife or something. Is yeah. That right? well, <laughs> yeah, but it it wasn't made evident until um, until his wife came in and said, "What you know? When did you last hit somebody?" And she said, "She said New Year's Eve," which was the same answer that Henry had made. <laughs> <laughs> So then it became clear that uh, you know they, they, they'd had a, a tiff with each other. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to say thank you for what you did on that album because that that oh. you know that was an incredible album, one of the best of all time, I think. And um, another guy thought, I love. Who would have thought we'd be talking about it fifty years later? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I remember when it was released and when I first heard it, I was blown away by it. Um, another guy I admired a lot who left us too early was John Miles. I, you know, his first album, when that first album came out, I think it was Rebel. I mean, I was, you know, I love that album. And you worked with oh, John. It's, um, I, I'm pleased to hear you that you were even aware of it because he, did, mm -hmm. he didn't really break in America. Um, he uh, had fantastic success in Europe and uh, yep. number one, number one singles and, uh, you know, I did. Uh, you know, I did a lot of work with him, not only on his albums but my albums too. I mean, he was he was always a, a, a favorite choice for, for for vocals on the on the project albums. Yeah, I was a big John Miles fan. Sad, sad loss. He, yeah, just a few weeks ago, passed away. Uh, yeah, unexpected. I know. Very very sad. Um, your new studio is incredible. <laughs> I saw videos of it. I can. Uh, Actually, I think if I turn off this effect, you can see. Uh, let me try. Twenty nineteen Ammonia Avenue. All right. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm taking the fuzzy background away. So wow, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Abbey Road. <laughs> Little version of Abbey Road. That's incredible. And and the scenery was, you know, and you live on a uh, avocado farm as well. Is that right? Yes, um, we grow uh, we grow avocados, and we also grow an exotic fruit called the yuzu lime, huh. which is um, is very popular with the Japanese. They make uh, ponzu sauce with it. Oh wow! Uh, we're just harvesting it now, actually. Just uh, just had a. Uh, a guy do some picking this morning and he's going to deliver some this afternoon so, so who does all the work like the oh yeah I don't, I, I don't get my hands dirty no <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> very uh, very much uh it, it, it's a working farm but uh, you know i don't get involved yeah avocados are so good for you too yeah yeah but we, yeah health wise we, it's it's great yeah we uh we eat lots of guacamole yeah yep. yeah well, I want to talk about you, you like the uh, you like to be a magician is what I heard. Do you, is that still do you still dabble yes, in magic? Still a, still a passion of mine. Yeah, um, I just love uh, love fooling people. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I love to be fooled as well. So I mean, I, I, I've uh, I mean part of part of the fun of. Uh, knowing magicians and uh, mm -hmm. spending time with them is if they fool you you know sometimes they'll sometimes they'll give it away right but generally generally it, it's the magician's code you know you, you just don't exactly don't, don't give them the secret what what kind of things do you do i mean card tricks or cards, cards and coins mainly cards yeah. and coins yeah yeah uh, are you gonna put that into your show you know, we 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 toyed with that idea. I mean, you can't really do coin tricks and card tricks in a, in a live show. I mean, it would be more sort of grand illusion, more more on the scale of uh, David Copperfield or right. But but uh, somehow it's never it's ne we've never made it happen. Mm -hmm. Probably for 
budget constraints to be honest <laughs> but, uh, yeah uh, it's it's still a passion of mine magic Lo love to love to uh learn a new trick every so often it's, it's right fun. my favorite magician is david blaine i really like david blaine Who, who's your favorite magician um probably the, a magician you may not have heard of it's, it's john carney he's mm -hmm. uh He's he's uh, very well known in magic circles and uh, has written some amazing books. Uh, and uh, he's he's an incredible, incredible close up magician. Um, I think uh, I mean everybody loves David Copperfield. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He's. Uh, I've I've met I've met David a couple of times. Um, he he gave me a tour of his uh, of his warehouse in uh, in Las Vegas. Which is incredible. I mean, he 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 every every illusion that he's ever done is really? stored away in various cases in this big uh, warehouse. Oh wow! And the uh, the uh, the the in, in, instead of uh, it looking like a warehouse, it, I, I, I don't think he's done done this uh, lately. But it used to be a a, a sort of naughty lingerie store shop front, oh. and uh, you know you would. You would walk in there and then be ushered through a back door. <laughs> then you'd be <laughs> taken into the square. But uh, I don't. I, th I think that's gone. I think he he got good good mileage out of it though. Yeah, yeah. I th you should do something on at least on YouTube with all your tricks. That'd be cool. Yeah, that that there's one problem with uh, video magic is that people people pause and you know go frame right. by frame. And, try and discover the secret so of course <laughs> but, uh, you know there's been some incredible music magicians on on that Penn and teller show right the uh, i think it's called fool us or mm -hmm. fool. yep yeah. yeah those guys are clever yeah. yeah they are clever well this blew me away when i found out you were related to oliver reed uh did you know oliver i mean did you never met him never met him never uh, met him his his grandfather is my great grandfather. Wow! Um, and so we're we're we're, we're kind of uh, cousins. I think second cousins or something like that. Right. But, uh, sadly, I know. No, no. He he was brilliant but crazy. <laughs> oh, he uh, he definitely had an, made an impression on people uh, in various states of inebriation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, Keith Moon of acting, <laughs> and he was friends with Keith Moon, of course. Yes, they were. They were very good friends. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was one uh, show on British TV that he came totally out of it, and it actually made for good TV. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the one you're talking about. It's yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> um, he also claimed that he was related to Peter the Great. I remember. So maybe you were a distant relative as well, huh? Peter the Great. Uh, yeah. Of, of what? Of what country? The UK. Right, Russia. I think the Tsar of Russia. Oh, Tsar of Russia. Right. Yeah. It's possible. I, <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah. Um, movies. Do you do you do any kind of music for movies, uh, scores, and things like that? Because you'd be perfect at it. I, I only ever did uh, one movie. Um, okay. It was it was a movie with um, Michelle Pfeiffer and Matthew Broderick called Lady Hawk. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I got a I got a early credit on the screen at the beginning of the movie, which was nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's it's um it's a completely different science recording for for the movies because you have to, mm. have to catch action and uh, you have to go to click tracks which will uh allow the music to to uh hit a, a, a certain point in the action uh, right and uh, it's it's a fascinating science actually um but uh no i'm waiting for the phone to ring for an another movie <laughs> i haven't been offered it just lately you know you'd be perfect for a james bond score i mean that well, makes sense yeah I, yeah I, I wouldn't turn it down if it was offered. <laughs> 
you you were proud of the fact that you were uh, you were mentioned in a uh, Austin Powers movie, right? Austin Powers too. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that that uh, arguably gave me more exposure than any motion or interview or anything. <laughs> Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I mean, they didn't consult me. I mean, the movie was out, and then yeah, a friend of mine told me to go and see it. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't tell me why. Said, <laughs> you have to. I'm originally from Baltimore, and I know you're a big Edgar Allan Poe fan. And of course, Edgar was he's buried in Baltimore. Um, do I, you still I follow? My, I met, follow. I met my wife. I met my wife in Baltimore. Really? You're kidding me. Merryweather Post Pavilion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great venue. I think it's called something else now. Uh, I think it's got another name. Yeah. I saw many shows there since. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were you guys had a show together or, had, or were you performing? We, we, um, for some reason, she was backstage and uh, I, met, I met her after the show. Oh, okay. And, uh, How about that? I didn't know that. Out of a beautiful relationship, which is still going on now. How many years? That was 95. 95, okay. So 27 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank her for me for arranging this interview too. She's, oh, you're, I'm sure she would. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she'll appreciate I'm gonna be, I'm gonna mention, and I'll say special thanks to her at the end of okay. the interview. Um, here's your final question, okay? I ask everybody that I interview this question. I get some very interesting answers. If you had a Field of Dreams wish like the movie to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend, really? Mm. Huh. Why? I think, I think he's a, just a, a, great, uh, a great songwriter. I mean, he was writing fantastic lyrics. I mean, even back in the 60s. I mean, incredible, incredible uh, lyrics. And I just love the sound of the Who. I, I, I must have seen the Who more times than any other band on earth. Is that right? Huh? Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, I've 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 only met him very briefly in a, in a studio uh, in London once. Uh, strangely enough, I've I met I've I, I know I know Roger Daltrey. I mean, we I wouldn't call him wouldn't say we're best of friends, but we often bump bump into each other. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, the Interesting. Who, the Who. Are, are still to this day a, a great band. The interview I had, go ahead. Did a tour with John Entwistle as well. Uh, yep. There was a thing called the uh, A Walk Down Abbey Road. It was a combination of uh, Beatles songs and songs by the artists appearing. Mm -hmm. Todd Rudinger was one of them. Um, John Entwistle, um, Anne Wilson from The Heart, mm -hmm. across, you know, a bunch of other artists all all doing their material and Beatles songs. It was It was, it was fun. It's funny, the interview I did before you was with Steve Longo, who was in the John N. Whistle band. And John N. Whistle, he put together, they have a new album out, which is really good, by the way. It's, it's just just now released. He had some great material unreleased. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, well, tell Steve I said hi if you speak to him again. I will. He's a good guy, real nice guy. I want to say very special thanks to Lisa Marie Parsons, tour manager, executive assistant for Alan Parsons Live for arranging this interview with Alan Parsons. Um, we, you can purchase the latest release by Alan Parsons from the New World. I gave it five stars, if that's okay with you. Um, it's, it's available at Amazon.com. It's a great album. It's got everything everything you can imagine on this album. It's, it's for everybody, and uh, you're going to love it. Um, also, Alan Parsons' Art and Science of Sound Recording, the book. Um, it's by you and Julian Kobeck, and that's that's out, which everybody should buy as well. It's um, yeah, it's a companion book to the uh, to the video series, which is um, I think it's you know the. Uh, it, the book is sort of instant gratification, whereas the, the video, you know, takes takes some getting into and uh, right. Uh, it's it, it was designed to be uh, educational, and uh, that's that's the principal reason it, it exists. Uh, <clears throat> well, with uh, schools and universities that have uh, uh, recording uh, technology departments, 
So yeah, still still doing well. It's uh, been a few years since that came out, but it's still doing well. Yeah, did, it's kind did, of hard. Did anybody, did anybody tell you about the box set, the the vinyl box set coming out? No, uh, go ahead and tell us about it. It's it's every project album uh, on vinyl. Okay, you know? on vinyl. Wow, vinyl only. Yeah, so um, I think uh, I think it's available for pre order. That if mm -hmm. anybody uh, wants to get one of the earlier copies of it, but uh, yeah, that, I'm excited to see how well that does. This vinyl vinyl's making a huge comeback. It, it is. It's expensive though. You know, the prices aren't what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know and I, I mentioned earlier in this in this interview nobody has a cd player anymore so, yeah I mean, that's right it's, it's online and they make cars without cd players i know so, that's it's kind of strange isn't it mm. i think the um you know when you listen to uh mp3s and things like that uh, they kind of lose the, the quality that you could capture with the CD. Even CDs lost a little bit of that quality sometimes, you know? Yeah, um, the, the, the technology has come a long way since, since the uh, invention of CD. Uh, right. Uh, Album, really albums were great. Actually, Reel to Reel was probably the best, right? The original Reel to Reel? Yeah, it, it, it probably was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the the consumer format though for for reel to reel was uh, a fairly low tape speed. It was three and three quarter IPS. Mm -hmm. But it's, they sounded good. Yeah, they did sound good. They sounded really good. I remember the old um, Akai decks, the the reel to reel Akai decks. I think uh, was a Tiak. I think it was a Tiak that mm -hmm. made a, a deck as well. Yeah, good old days. I'm showing my age too. <laughs> More information about Alan Parsons, you can go to his website, www.alanparsons.com. Alan's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Alan, thank you so much for being on the show today, man. I really, really appreciate it. You're most welcome. Thank you. We can't wait to see you back on the road again. All right. I'm looking forward to it, too. And you look wonderful, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I'm right. 40, 41, 42. Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> you look great. The <laughs> birthday coming up. So, uh, I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alan. 70 something. That's all I'll tell you. Well, you don't look it, man. <laughs> Take care. All right. All right. Bye bye now.